Uh, we got a big group stage today, the Tug of War Mad Moon. I'm Zayori, joined today by Elevated for, I think, the first time. I don't know that we've ever actually cast together, bud. But we've got a fun one here, Aggressive Mode versus Virtus Pro. A best of three series here, the beginning of this GSL group stage. A first pick, Oracle, into a Nyx Assassin Ancient Apparition. Donnie, my friend, how you feeling this morning? Oh, you know, it's wonderful. It's it's great to be alive. It's great to be casting some Dota. And I think you are right. This is probably the first time we've ever cast together. So that's also very exciting. Yes, indeed. Uh, looking forward to it. And, you know, just a, a simple series here. No elimination. So uh, a lot to look forward to. Of course, a ton of Dota 2 coming up over the next couple of days here at WePlay. Uh, they've got the mainstream running and an official list of talent in Ukraine right now, up to all the normal We Play shenanigans. And, uh, well, we're just helping them out alongside the other remote casters here. So, um, Aggressive versus Virtus Pro. VP should be the favorites coming into this one. I was looking at the odds this morning, something like 3 to 1 uh, in favor of Virtus Pro. So, already, see what Aggressive Mode have up their sleeve. Yeah, it sounds about right to me. I mean, Aggressive Mode had a pretty good showing during the uh, qualifiers. They actually, I believe, knocked out Nigma and took second place in their group behind Secret. Um, so they actually had a shot of going to the Major. And uh, Verse Pro, of course, did qualify themselves. So I think it's going to be a pretty good series. We've got a little bit of bad blood between Lil and, you know, Virtus Pro. That's always a little spicy. I'd like to see that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um... Oh, sorry. I need just a second. I uh, was wondering, what am I hearing in the background there? I didn't have my mute co-broadcasters on. That's what it was. Sorry about that, folks. You, you're hearing double Donnie there for that. <laughs> that, that one's uh, that one's on me. So, uh, no, you're definitely right, though. And the star power on this squad is certainly there. I mean, I think any team that has Lil on it makes me stop for a second and go, oh, okay. All right. We might have something here. Of course, Spartan and Skylark have a long history with one another, so... Uh, certainly some synergy there. Yeah, and speaking of those two, it looks like we probably have their heroes picked first with the Oracle Beastmaster. Um, Beast is kind of an interesting hero that's shown up a bit in certain regions, more so in, in like South America and Europe from what I've seen. Um, and then Oracle has really just appeared to be one of the best position fives in the game at the moment. Lots of teams are abusing it, pairing it with like the Trolls or the Huskars or stuff like that. Yep. Oracle definitely opens up uh, quite a bit of options. I think having a root is certainly nice as well. Combos with some, some certain setup type heroes. Um, pretty nice against Ancient Apparition as well. They think about it for a moment, and Virtus Pro jump right into the Phantom Lancer. So there you go for a Tier 1, Position 1. Yep. Uh, you know, it's just a PL game. PL does what PL does, and I don't think it's changed from patch to patch, really. You're looking at the diffusal timing as one power spike, and then uh, it's a late-game monster. Uh, I, I like I like the PL. You know, it's you have to avoid the, the roar, and that's about it so far. And looks pretty good. Kuman has been playing it quite a bit for his pro in uh, their qualifiers and that sort of thing. Good old Kuman. Uh, formerly is supposed to be a bait player, but yep. now he's a Virtus Pro player. It's all I can think of when I see Kuman now. <laughs> what about Zayats? We have to come up. Are, are they like the thieves? They, they've got some sort of. Yeah, I, sort I don't of know, know what the right term right? is. I, I think I'm a, a bi hashtag bias caster because I, I'm definitely a B8 fan. So it's probably good that we're not casting what is likely to be a slaughter on the mainstream. I saw it was <laughs> 11 to 1 odds uh, B8 versus Secret, which is honestly fair. I mean, they got knocked out in opens. It's versus Secret, world class team. It's a tough one, but. I don't know, man. Seeing Kuman and that footage with Dendi, just like, man, they really invested in you, buddy. What could have been? You could have been yeah. friends with Dendi. I know, but he decided to go with the angry bear instead, and All right. here we are. Snap fire into Life Stealer uh, after that centaur pick, of course. Um, nothing exciting about the Life Stealer. Stable but not particularly flashy. Curious to hear your thoughts on Snapfire right now. Um, I think that the hero is really just, it comes down to like cookie ultimate. I think Scatterblast is, is okay as a spell. Uh, Lil Shredder is 
pretty underwhelming, but it's it's about the ultimate, and so it's kind of strange that they haven't paired it with anything that really helps their ultimate. Like they have Roar and Root from Oracle, but I like to see Snapfire with like the Void or you know a Puck Coil, something like that that keeps people in a location. Because right now it seems pretty easy for Virtus Pro to just get out, even without the Centaur being picked, and now with the Stampede, like how do you utilize Snapfire? That's true. Uh, I mean, like open wounds, there's kind of a little bit of synergy there. I do like the puck suggestion just in a vacuum. You know, like the, the chrono is, that's great when you can line it up, but it's not the longest duration. Um, Dream coil is nice and spammable. And I mean, that, that's a combo that can just run around and, and look for kills uh, whenever they present themselves. Magnus now, final ban from VP. A little surprised to see him make it all the way to a sixth ban, and we'll see what aggressive mode want to take out with their last. Um, probably looking to remove a mid here. I think OD might actually be a pretty safe ban. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's definitely one of no one's most played heroes over the last probably six months, honestly. Um, and it's good against Snapfire Beastmaster. And potentially even lifesteal. If three strength heroes on the other side, you always got to look at that OD as a possibility. Um, can't underestimate the save against Beastmaster as well. Just astral the roar target and pretty much nullify his impact in team fights. Yeah, that's a good point. With that Aghanim Scepter build, it's certainly a thing. Uh, Shadow Fiend snap pick for aggressive mode. So they seem to know what they want here, and uh, they're going to go for it. Now plenty of carry power on this squad. Still a little bit light on control, though. Does not uh, add any synergy with that snap fire as we were talking about. Yeah, I've been seeing Shadow Fiend picked up a bit against PL because of the, the fear now on Requiem. It gives them a little bit more control, and just people seem to think that Requiem is a reasonably good counter to PL. And, you know, I can kind of agree. But it looks like aggressive mode is, is looking to hit a timing where they just have, you know, the, maybe even the presence or effects buildings and Beastmaster just running at towers before Kuman actually hit, gets online. Mm -hmm. The no one Storm Spirit. Um, you know, I always hate to use the term free storm game. I, it might be a little dramatic here, but this is looking like a pretty darn good storm game. You got Primal Roar. Okay. Outside of that, you're pretty good. Yeah, Primal Roar with its like two and a half second cast time that should be pretty easy to dodge for any reasonably good Storm Spirit player. I tend to agree. I think that um, it works out pretty well to play against. I mean, Shadow Fiend is sometimes seen as a counter to Storm, at least in the early stages of the lane. But um, you can also just, both of you are going to shove out the wave, go farm the jungle. And then I think that probably favors Storm in the long run. I like yeah. the pairing with uh, with the Nyx Assassin because he's going to be finding those pickoffs around the map and making it hard for aggressive mode to actually group up and push. The thing that scares me a lot about this VP lineup is their gank potential, right? You've got this yeah, Nyx exactly. Assassin who can play mobile ward, look around, try to set up ganks. You've got the AA who can actually secure those kills with his ultimate, give Nyx that extra little bit of damage that he needs to find those kills he wouldn't be able to on his own. And then on top of that, you've got Centaur who does contribute something to the global presence to secure those kills, find the initiations. And then, of course, Storm Spirit, who's semi-global as well, can just zip in and help clean up those kills they can do this four plus one really, really well. And I think a, a bit better than aggressive mode. Um, on the Storm Spirit Shadow Fiend matchup, I think it should be fairly even um, at like 10 minutes, let's say. You're definitely right. Shadow yeah. Fiend bullies Storm a little bit, but then Storm heads into the jungle. Shadow Fiend heads into the jungle. And, you know, all things equal, it shouldn't be too lopsided uh, unless there's, you know, some sort of a rotation or some other foul play in the mix yeah i agree um you can kind of see what both teams want to do right you you definitely hit the nail on the head with the, the pickoffs which kind of enable the space for pl to get huge and i don't really feel like aggressive mode has fully addressed the pl issue either with their draft it's more so hitting a timing and winning the game then and anytime you see that against one of these like well-experienced teams with a captain like Solo. Uh, I tend to favor the team that 
has more options, right? You know, Verse Pro could certainly snowball out of the laning stage, or they could just win the late game. And aggressive mode seems to have this timing window where they're going to be really strong. Yeah, I, I would generally agree with that. I think options are almost always a, a good thing to have. And they also just have a little bit more control. You know, Nyx is a hero that can set up pretty well. It's not a guaranteed stun, but if you can hit a carapace, which that might be possible on a, a couple of these heroes, you're, you're in okay shape there. There is just not much control. This is one of these games where I look at the Beastmaster and go, all right, Skylark. A lot of eyes on you there, bud. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely going to need to make use of these roars uh, to good effect. Otherwise, we're going to see the storm zipping all over the place, and PL will probably never die. All right. Well, two outposts for the Dire. Look at this little sneaky play from aggressive mode. But will they lose Skylark for it? Oh, bother. He's going to get stunned. His feet will be made cold, but little scoot from Lil. That's actually a cute counter against the cold feet. I didn't really think about Cookie, but uh, yeah, that's a way to make sure you don't get stunned. Yeah, the force movement. Oh, nice. Lil with the deny. Styling. Okay. The, uh, the Cookie level one is interesting, though. I gotta say, I, I don't usually see that. I've seen I don't a lot of think it's standard. Level one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a, a panic skill. You know, it saved him. He also got dispelled at the same time by the Oracle, so probably not necessary. But yeah. at the very least, he now has that to escape uh, for the next minute or so until he hits level two. I'm, uh, I'm far from an expert on Snapfire, but ideal world, when would you normally grab Cookie? Is it pretty late, or do you get this first value point pretty early on anyway? Uh, I think the current build is usually Scatter level 1, then you get 2 points in Cookie, sometimes 2 points in Scatter Blast. Most of the time, um, position 5, position 4 is going to be four four zero actually, in terms of skill build. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So not that bad. Um, no. I do like it against Ancient Apparition. Though. Very, very cool idea. We'll see the setup on the Skylark, though. Stun. Cold feet. Cookie not going to save you that time. Or it's on its it? way in, and it should be just enough. Solo needed one more there. So, all right. Cookie for the win again. Sold. <laughs> yeah, it's working out all right. But I, uh, I think the Skylark needs to... Probably play a little bit more safe. He's constantly in trouble here. This uh, this new idea of tri lanes coming back has been pretty brutal for a lot of these off laners who kind of need to be in the lane. We're seeing, you know, pairing the Nyx Assassin stun with the cold feet, two stuns, lots of damage with the Lance as well. And uh, Lil, recognizing that, he's going to double up the wave and TP back home. Very nice. Checking in up top. Resolution in an okay position on this Centaur. Soon to be level two. Having some fun with Spartan here, who ultimately is making the space for Skeeter. Lifestealer about to be level three, and uh, he's having a, a pretty fine time up here. Yeah, Lifestealer's always fine with tanking creeps under tower. Oh, yeah. And a double damage on the Shadow Fiend. So that's going to help this mid lane out for him. Storm actually winning right now. No one 16 and 2 compared to the 11 2. Ha! <laughs> no one I spoke too soon. He gets dumpstered in the mid lane by this double damage Shadow Fiend. Dang. Yeah, I was not expecting him to just eat two raises there directly under tower. Dang. It seems like that, that was, was pretty dirty. telegraphed. <laughs> that Shadow Fiend pulled out his calculator and just smacked him upside the head with it. Like, this yeah. isn't a minor. That was a bitch kind of moment. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you uh, hate to see it as a storm spirit there to the devil damage really equalizing the uh, the damage issues that Shadow Fiend has normally. And uh, no one going to be a little bit in recovery mode. Still ahead in CS, though. Lil going to get popped down bottom. The cookie not enough for the three on one. And back up, Rezo on the run. Skeeter already used those open wounds, but it looks like they're gonna find this. Rezo takes a tumble, two to two. 
Both offlaners having a few issues. But that's just kind of offlaner's life right now. Wow, a total of seven last hits between the two of them. Almost four minutes into the game. This is the new meta. The, For uh, sure. Are, are we back to calling it the suicide lane? I think we're definitely trending that way. Uh, you know, people have come a long way in terms of how they play the off lane. I feel like with the the creep pulling, the double waving, cutting waves, that kind of stuff. So it's not quite as suicidal as it used to be, but we're definitely getting back to that point where safe lane is becoming the safe lane yet again. Yeah, truly. And we we need a better term for it. Suicide lane is just a little bit too insensitive, and off lane is a little too sensitive you know like we need a, a middle ground term and i just don't know what it is we need that like libertarian term for it right Can't space be. maker dude that's just that's ubiquitously positive right I, I think so it could be interpreted as feeding sometimes but well yeah I mean, sometimes it's just space exactly <laughs> Well, pretty even early game here. Uh, the mid, kind of as expected, has leveled out some. Let's take a look at the net worth. And yeah, Shadow Fiend's up by about 100. And see a battle for the bounty runes down bottom. Skylog probably going to be the first to fall. Zayat's down low, pops himself a stick. And now they're going to turn on to Lil. No cookie for you, Grammy. And they're going to chase her down into oblivion. This should be another one for Kuman. And it will be. A two for nil at that bottom rune. VP. Well, now they jump into the lead. Yeah, this uh, aggressive mode lineup is not at full capacity yet in terms of their aggressive potential. And so they just keep taking these little skirmishes, which don't favor them yet. And you got to be careful about giving away too many of these kills to a team that seems to have the late game on lock. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's weird to say, too, because aggressive mode don't really have bad late game. You know, Shadow Fiend... Uh, Life Stealer, Beastmaster, scale pretty well, especially around that vision with the Hawk, but I don't think they scale well versus Storm Spirit. To me, the longer this goes on, the easier it's going to be for him to kind of break this game open. And the fact that he's not really getting shut down now uh, scares me a bit. The Shadow Fiend has made up for some of that lost momentum and is now a full level up on the Storm and uh, has about a 500 net worth edge. So this is a window where it's a little tough for no one. And if he can get away with this without dying, that would be great. And yeah, like he'll be fine. you'd almost like to see the Beastmaster just like coming mid, even even now, just to take out this tower. It seems like the longer Skylark stays alone in this bottom lane, the worse it's going to get for him down here. He needs the XP uh, though. Like him and Centaur both are only level four. Six minutes, it's not great. And Rezo up top, my bad on that. He's gonna get caught though. Easy setup for the Shadow Fiend with the Fortune's End. Yeah, the uh, the off laners both struggling still. The uh, the levels, I mean, high impact skills from both of them, Roar and Stampede on either side, kind of coming online pretty late here. Still a lot of space for the PL though, and he is ahead of the Life Stealer right now. One zero and three compared to the Life Stealers. One zero zero. Calling out it's a kinda ping on Skylark. It's kind of interesting that they uh, picked the Life Stealer into PL, but with the new build where you just go first item Maelstrom, I guess he's kind of seen as this PL counter ish at this point. Oh, mid. And have a dive onto Lil under tower. It'll be a layup for no one. Caught by a fortune's end, but no follow up. Um, Life Stealer on PL. I don't know. Is, is that enough to have him be considered a counter? I guess we'll hold that thought as now they jump in onto the Shadow Fiend, and there's some of that mobility. No one popping off as he rolls over to level 7. Finds two kills, and one of them on that high prized Shadow Fiend. And that's a big deal. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah, stepping out a little bit too far. Zayat's getting a lot done. 3-0-3 on this Nyx Assassin, despite only being level 4. Uh, this is what you want on this hero, since he is one of the worst laning heroes in the game, but he's been able to find these Impales, the Spike Carapaces, to set up his team, and getting a lot done with uh, not too many resources. So, PL Lifestealer. 
I oh going back to that yeah I, yeah I don't know is, is that enough to call it a counter though like it gives you some options right I think it makes PL's early mid game perhaps a little bit harder um, they're gonna go for resolution up here and certainly the, the great thing about Maelstrom is not only is it good for killing illusions and stuff, it's a great farming tool. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a mini Midas in some ways where Life Stealer can just cruise around through the jungle. So I like it as an item in general, but I'm still fearful of what Kuman's going to be able to do 15, 20 minutes from now. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, they obviously picked it into the PL, so they, they think it's good enough. I don't think you would overtly just pick a a bad matchup for your carry um but i tend to agree that the the pl has always been pretty good against life stealer just because you can kind of avoid all of his damage and, and kite around kill everybody else and then finish up the life stealer afterwards so i'm i'm not entirely sure uh what aggressive mode sees in particular in this matchup although you know with with maelstrom being so popular it, it is the item against pl yeah, sure. And uh, you, you have this built-in magic immunity for the Diffusal Blade. Given the context here, I definitely think it's a, a great angle for the Life Stealer to play. Uh, so not, not criticizing that aspect of it. Uh, three bounties will get picked up by VP. So 10 minutes in, furthering their lead a little bit more. Right now, VP have one of these, or pardon me, aggressive mode of one of these lineups that strike me as they're on a bit of a timer, almost like they need to end this sooner rather than later. But they also have one of these lineups that doesn't really push particularly fast. Sure, you've got the Beastmaster. He helps. He's going to go for Necro Book, so you'll have a couple extra summons to smack on those towers. Shadow Fiend can siege. I mean, they could be looking at a level 15 timing. He is going to go BKB first item, so maybe they want to push around the presence aura affecting build-ins, but I haven't seen that picked up nearly as much recently. No one sniffs out the gank. Look at this, man. You're not making that happen during daytime, boys. What are you thinking? Yeah, that was a little bit optimistic there. <laughs> they tried for the wraparound to set up for that mid-push, potentially, with the roar at level 6, and... Well, it's a great Whiff. idea, but it, daytime against Storm Spirit, I mean, unless he's looking at the shop or taking a nap, that's what's going to happen pretty much every time. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. And up top, Ice Blast, going to miss, and now Storm, he's just going to turn for a kill. Lil's going to be the one that gets caught. Maybe a neutral deny? No. All right. That is uh, your all-time backfire. Now back down bottom. Skylark going to be in some trouble. Maybe Zayetz missed the stun. Now he's going to take a primal roar, and he's going to eat this one, it looks like. Carapace buys him a second, but that's all it is. His courier also going to go down in the fray. So aggressive mode actually strike back. They get a little bit. Yeah, they definitely do. It cost them a roar, which they probably would have preferred to get a kill on a, a big core with, but... They'll take it because it's going to translate into a tier one tower. However, at the same time, Resolution probably going to trade top, and that's a lot less of a hero or number of heroes yeah. being committed. Feels like Rezo really needs this space too. So when you factor it all together, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Tower will go down. Ice Blast not really slowing him down all too much. Rezo yeah, Re putting that retaliate to good work here. He's hurting down there, fifth from the bottom in net worth, but he's just yeah. going to rush a blink dagger to help facilitate these uh, these jumps. You can see Virtus Pro's plan kind of coming to fruition right now. Just pick off, pick off, pick off, pick off, and never let aggressive mode build up a full head of steam. This build on the Centaur does strike me as a little bit risky, though. I, I like having a, a build-up item like a hood or a vanguard or something that makes you feel a little more durable. Hell, even like Tranquils or some kind of upgraded boots. Straight sure. Blink is really good if you can get it. But um, it's been tough until maybe about 10 minutes, and now Rezo seems to be farming very quickly. So maybe he'll get some time in the jungle here. They are going to smoke up as he TPs back. Rezo and Solo going on a mission. Yeah, the classic Solo smoke around the middle of the second day. He's got three Observer Wards in hand, three sentries as well, trying to take over an area, and Rezo is his bodyguard. 
Uh, yeah, I think I've seen this oh. essentially every every single game that Virtus Pro has ever played. Well, there's a sentry down. If they're going to walk right into him, Rezo in the front gets the stun on the Skylark. He will be saved by the Oracle, but now Storm's here. Finishes off Spartan. Skylark surviving for now. Does set up the kill onto Solo, but he'll pop. Now three from aggressive mode, looking to chase down Rezo. Bora may be able to line up some raises here. Open wounds will make that easy. And ends up a two for two. Not the clean set that VP was hoping for, however. That was all five of aggressive mode rotating. And Kuman is just free farming up top on this Phantom Lancer. So even though the Life Stealer picked up a kill, um, oh no, he didn't actually, but uh, not really worth it for him. Kuman has made out like a bandit through all this. Yeah, I, I think that you're pretty happy with that as VP. You get the smoke tanked as well, because that was a smoke by aggressive mode. Yeah. That was immediately popped, and you keep all of your important heroes alive. Good stuff. Yeah, it's a great point. They do lose that tier one tower mid, though. So a nice play from aggressive mode. Uh, Oracle. Looking for the AA. Does not connect. Bora just barely sidesteps it. This is the power of this global presence we talked about during the draft. Storm going for a, a quick bloodstone here. And what's so great about that combo with the AA is it doesn't really cost you anything. No one moves into yeah. position, waits for a couple seconds, 40 second cooldown ice blast flies. If you hit it, you go. If you miss it, ah, you just go back to farming. No big deal. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're taking a page out of the, uh, the bait book and kind of going fishing here. <laughs> with their lineup, I, I definitely like that approach to taking these team fights. Whereas we look at the side of aggressive mode, and it's like, okay, I'm committing roar plus right every single time you want to pick off. Right. Oh god. Excuse me. Kuman's pretty close to that defusal blade, so I wonder if he decides to join fights once he gets that, or just continues Shadow fiend. on his merry way. Oh, that was the reveal of Rezo's Blink Dagger, I think. But Oracle right there to keep him safe. Also a BKB on Shadow Fiend. So I actually don't think he was really in much danger there. He's gone Treads BKB. Straight up, dude. Yeah. It's uh, Straight a no pretty chaser. good build this game, I think. It's going to make him... Very, very hard to kill, at least for the next few minutes. Oh, look at this play. Kuman sets it up. He kind of baits them down as he starts to take the outpost, and they pop Spartan right away. Bora with a 10-second BKB TP as the Yikes. rest of his team gets left behind and cleaned up. Skylark and Lil both brought down a 3 for nil. Brilliant play from Virtus Pro. A lot of credit to Kuman for setting that up and just drawing their focus so the rest of his team trouble, can actually. capitalize. And yep, they're going to find Bora now. Oh, I thought he went home, but he went to mid. They did the old wraparound. No BKB for 40. He's going to pop. Now Skeeter joins this party mid, goes in onto Solo. Solo's team actually going to split the other way. They'll let him go, and Skeeter will end up with a freebie. But still a big win for Virtus Pro. And again, Kuman was just up top that whole time. Yeah, he's just kind of sneaking in behind these engagements and then cleaning up all the farm, both the lane and the jungle. This is about as easy as it gets for BL. And, uh, man, 10 second BKB to TP mid and then die anyway. That does not feel good if you're the Shadow Fiend. No, that's, that's pretty brutal. Um, grab this BKB. Your 10 second charge is as defensive as it gets. And you still die. Yeah, dude. That's... You know, in my friend's circle, that's what we would call a shit sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, depending on what region you're in, that's probably where the uh, Shadow Fiend drops his items, kills them, and starts walking <laughs> down mid. <laughs> I mean, it's only a 1k deficit. So even though it's 13 to 8, it really feels like Virtus Pro were in control. But from a farm level, it's, it's still very even. And aggressive mode could just win one mid-game fight and start to turn things around a little bit. Uh, neutral item-wise, things also look good for VP. Clumsy net and already a Meteor Hammer for this 316 Nyx Assassin. This is a pretty scary combo. He's level 11, pops the Vendetta. They see Skeeter coming in onto Solo. Now the Stampede might be able to get it away. Grammy, she's a little bit behind, but she finds it. Oh, snap fire. There's that Mortimer Kiss. Yeah, what a skill. <laughs> it just does so much damage. 
Uh, but it is another big ultimate committed. Uh, they do get the stampede out of uh, the centaur. And it is only result. solo. If they can set up onto Skeeter, he's going to get caught. Look at this combo from Zayets. The stun lock is insane. He can't even get off that rage. And it'll be an easy kill on the Nakes. So comes into focus here. VP once again getting the better of the trades. Happy to suicide solo if it means a setup on the carry. 100%. And Skeeter starts angrily drawing in the minimap as a result. I was actually just about to praise him for having such a good game so far. He's kind of impressed me on aggressive mode in terms of being able to just really almost carry his team I mean, solo first every death. single game. Yeah. He's having a good one. Halberd is... Uh, oh, he just got the Senj, and then he's going to go for Mjolnir first, but he is very farmed, that's for sure. Yeah, he's he's been keeping up. And, I mean, Kuman, 1-0 and 7. He's also done a good job of balancing farm time uh, and still coming to fights. You know, I, I he's sort of got the farm like an AFK carry, but he has turned up to, uh, you know, about half of these engagements, and his farm is reflecting that. We got Diffusal Blade, and not far away from the Manta, actually. Already has that recipe. I also love to see the Vambrace on a hero like PL. Get the double tread switch. Uh, the Shadow Fiend also got a Vambrace, which is pretty nice. I love it on PL. Hey, the Keen Optic on Oracle. That's pretty nice as well. Suffers from pretty big time cast range issues until level 15. Absolutely. Shovel. On Skylark, the classic, one of my favorite items. I mean, the shovel is good. I, I'm starting to not like it, though, because I play a lot of support, and my team has been bullying me into using the shovel. <laughs> the last pub I played, they just kept saying, Stafu, only use shovel. I was trying to coach the team to victory, you see, and they weren't agreeing with my suggestion. So the, the shovel has become a, like, a hard position six type dig. You know, like, listen, bro, all right, you suck. <laughs> So we're just going to have you sit in the base and dig every 55 seconds. That's all you're good for. That, that stung, Donnie. That, that didn't make me feel good. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not very nice of your teammates. I, I can't imagine a Dota game where people would be that uh, negative towards you as well, a support. Yeah. I was probably <laughs> being a little aggressive in communicating my, my strategies. But around the Roche Pit we go. Virtus Pro did lob that AA ulti, gets Skeeter a little bit lower. And kind of a game of chicken now, both teams posturing, aggressive mode, living up to their name and putting a little bit more into the pit. Uh, with the Beastmaster, they do have some advantage here. They've got these summons for some extra damage, uh, and they've got the vision game, but not committing everything. They are going to kill oh, it kind of slow, and now they're in. They do drop a stun onto Skeeter. He gets bashed. Kuman, he's on the top of the pit. At this point, you have to commit, though. Roche is so low. They do have better team fight in this area, but here's the jump. Initiation comes out from the Radiant, though. Oh, nice ulti from Bora. Gets off the BKB. Everyone's still alive. The Storm has to scoot out. They so pop blue in the background. Roche low. The Vendetta from Zayats isn't enough, but he does finish off Roche. Radiant grab the Aegis. It looks like aggressive mode could take this fight despite losing two. But do they have any more follow-up damage? VP have sustained, and now they've killed Bora. No one has regen. He's trying to pick off Solo on the back line. They do end up grabbing the Aegis. It was Zayats, but now it's just Skeeter. He's the only one alive on aggressive mode. He does find a kill for goes himself. Down is he going to be able to clean this up? This life stealer is pretty scary. No one with a cute little play around the pit. TP's out. Okay, very nice. Good kiting. And they're just going to dip. So ends up a huge swing for VP. Uh, a two for four, and they lose that Aegis. And now a 6K net worth lead for Virtus Pro. Yeah, the uh, the pure damage on Vendetta actually did a huge amount of work there. I don't think that Zayats is able to get the Roche kill without that. Oh, resolution going in hard, but no one's there to back him up. They get the kill on Skeeter, and now they want Lil. She's eating the cookie. She's got a full tummy, and Grammy's put to sleep. Well, we're seeing that global presence that uh, that Nyx Assassin setting up for the Storm Spirit that we thought we would in the draft, and it's uh, pretty scary. Even this life stealer who's massively farmed very tanky gets popped with these long-range zips and the lockdown like you mentioned earlier because of this new talent on nyx assassin means that he can never rage uh out of the meteor hammer combo like he used to be able to 
Oh, yeah. So this was one of those GPM talents that got removed. Yep. And I think Trent and I argued about this one quite a bit. He put it in poop tier or something, and I think it's actually pretty good. As you mentioned, you get the full stun lock. Yep. Yeah, it ends up being a very, very long stun uh, combo that you're able to pull off pretty much every single time. And we've seen Nyx Assassin really rise to be, like... If not the best position four in the game, certainly one of the top three. Initiation again in mid lane. They catch Spartan. See ya. Soulburn going to finish him off because, hey, that's a completed Orchid. And the 21st Bloodstone charge for no one. Oh, 24 minutes in. Feels Skeeter's like all alone. VP starting to run away with it. Skeeter. Zayats, that's your ward there. Pops the Rage, makes it back, but... Yeah, Nyx is one of these heroes that has just been steadily buffed and finally at a point where he just kind of feels good. You know, like Vendetta doing pure, Vendetta having a break on top of it, now the extra stun duration on Impale. Like, there was this long window where Nyx didn't feel like a hero unless you were playing against, like, Batrider, Enigma. That's kind of it. Yeah, Ember Spirit, maybe. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Ember. There you go. And, um... <laughs> You're you know, right. All these little buffs over time have added up to really make him uh, a big boy. I like seeing a little Nyx here and there. Yeah, he's, he's fun to watch. He enables all these aggressive plays. Oh, another setup. They're going to go in onto Bora. That's a BKB, and now maybe they just disengage. Storm clipped by the fear, but sends him the direction he wants to go. Certainly happy with that. Now the reinitiation. Net onto Lil, some follow-up from PL Illusions. Aggressive mode in full retreat. No one jumps in. He's low on mana, but he's deep in the back line. The follow-up's there. They get Spartan Skylark. Two buybacks used as Bora falls. He's going to hold his buyback. A smart play and probably too eager on those buybacks. They're not really able to do anything. I mean, the fight just ended immediately after those pickoffs, so it's just... Extra gold loss now. That makes it nearly a 2,500 net worth swing, man. Yeah, is it just me or does Shadow Fiend feel absolutely worthless in this game? He's, he's used his ultimate two or three times to zero effect, and I think we're kind of seeing that, you know, the high mobility of Virtus Pro just making it so aggressive mode has really no way of playing this game yeah and down bottom i mean no one is just breaking this game wide open now 12 1 and 7 there is nothing slowing him down with the orchid anybody who's alone in the lane like that is a potential victim and uh not to mention solo there to back him up i think when you have these like shadow fiend and life stealer both fit that same category for me they're hard carries that don't really offer any control. Okay, there's some open wounds. Okay, you know, the, the Requiem fears a little bit. They're just straight damage. And when you have two heroes like this, it's like Shadow Fiend and Drow on the same lineup. We'll see Skeeter down bottom trying to tango with no one. And no one does not look like he'll be able to finish off this kill. It'll be a Rage TP. But they've got too many of these sort of, quote, do-nothing heroes. And then it puts all this pressure on Skylark to be their initiator, so he never gets to follow up or really do anything that he wants to. He's he's this, like, pub earth shaker. Everyone's saying, come on, man, just initiate with a four-hero echo. What's wrong with you? And <laughs> that that's a lot of pressure. You know, in this case, it's not nearly as hard, but the way that Virtus Pro are playing, Skylark can't really do much. He hasn't been able to get his Blink Dagger, hasn't really been able to put this Necro Book level one to good use. So it feels like their whole team has no initiation now. They had one way to do it, that went bust, and now you've got no backup. Yeah, both Shadow Fiend and Left Stealer feel significantly worse when you're playing from behind. Yeah. You know, th their lineup wanted to be ahead by 10k gold lead at this point and just running down towers. And since they kind of got outplayed in the lanes and then didn't really get active early enough, they're finding themselves in just constant comeback mode, which is just not what their lineup is built for at all they're gonna try a desperation smoke here but storm spirit not the target they want to find he'll expose it zayats comes in that's a radiant observer so he feels very safe right now virtus pro gonna take a moment to fix their team speak and also think about everything they see on the map right now which is three heroes 
very convenient time to analyze how you're going to take this team fight because I this mean, really could be the end. I think uh, this uh, this team fight would have gone the same way pretty much no matter what. As soon as that smoke broke on Storm Spirit, lost a lot of hope there, bud. Yeah, instant call the retreat. But again, they're really not a very mobile team, so it's a, it's a slow plotting retreat when the other team has global presence and uh high movement speed as well uh so there's a telescope out on zayats what do you think about the telescope to me this is one of the more busted um like maybe not completely broken items but when you look at tier three this one has one of the most tangible impacts i would say yeah i really like it i i would almost always want this item on my team out of the tier three items just because it helps everybody right it helps casters it helps right clickers and i mean even the scan cooldown is pretty nice if you're good at hitting those yeah it doesn't give you any stats which is kind of the one downside to it but especially when you've got you know a, a skill like impale which is quite low range but benefits from being a much longer one yeah it's it's nice and did they did they? Am I crazy? So they've got four tier one? one items on the side of VP, and right now they're only using one tier three item on the side of the dire. They didn't snipe one of these items, did they? Um. Well, it says it says it was dropped. I think usually, what happens is if it's uh, if it has been stolen, it'll say unknown. It'll like oh, give the okay. item to the other team, but it'll say unknown because it's. It's not known who it's carried by. However, I do remember seeing Telescope uh, drop next to Lil's name. So... It's possible. It has a radius now, but you totally, if you're kind of fighting in the jungle and, and neutrals get brought down, it is definitely still possible. Was it neutral items do not drop if there is an enemy killing player within 600 radius of the kill neutral unit. So you can still be pretty near, especially like a storm spirit. You know, you're far enough away when it dies, but then you can zip in. Yeah, 600 is not that big. It's like half a blink dagger range, pretty much. Yeah. A maximum of four items can drop per tier for each item. So let me ask you this: How uh, how do you feel about the neutrals this far into the patch? Like, are you are you sold on them being uh, the new way forward with Dota, or um, or what do you think? I don't know. We've talked about this a lot on the podcast, and it has definitely changed over time. I I think I want to like them, and I really liked the way pubs felt when they were introduced. But I think I just like the chaos of new content when people are trying to figure things out more sure. than I liked these items as an introduction. Um, at first, they felt almost too impactful, and now it feels like every change that we make that makes them less significant. You know, we went from using all of your inventory slots, now having one slot, we went from having all these really broken ones to having those removed. Like, they're getting more and more watered down, and every step to water them down, I like more, which mm -hmm. makes me wonder, what's the <laughs> end game here? And am I sure. just on this this track of, yeah, I kind of just want them removed. If every step to having them down that spectrum makes me happier, then, um, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I I think we're getting close to this point where we're just adding another currency. You know, I've, I've read about that token solution. Oh, let's drop tokens. Then you can buy the items. It's like, well, we, we've got gold <laughs> for that. Why don't we just make these items that you can buy then? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Right. They, yeah, as Trent I definitely said, feel like they feel like buffs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I feel like 724 is definitely the patch that 723 should have been. It's like the the refined version of yeah. that big patch. Um but I also tend to agree like they they are significantly less impactful than they were, but you definitely still feel and I I remember I think it was during the major qualifiers they actually had uh no tail and seb come on uh gork's stream after they won the qualifier and they let a little information slip about how they kind of just view the game as like well you control the map you get your tier threes the other team doesn't get their tier threes and then the game's over at that point so 
Yeah, we were definitely at that point where there were too many non Dota objectives when you had all these outposts and the shrines and the bounties. It, it was just too much to the point that it felt like we were almost playing a different game. And then that point you just made where it's just too mechanical. There, there's no art anymore. It's just you get ahead, you starve out the map, and the more you starve them, the more you snowball. Um, I don't know. I think talents were one of the best things introduced to Dota in the last couple years. You know, the new heroes yeah, have been agree. cool, whatever else. I think talents were just a, a game game buster. That that was such a change that added so much more diversity without changing what Dota is. And yeah, I think these I other objectives get us a, a little... We were getting a little too close to that, like, Heroes of the Storm territory, you know? And I'm so <laughs> glad that that shit was dialed back. Yeah, I, I think removing shrines was a really, really important part of that. Um, it was just like you had like multiple bases outside of your own base kind of <laughs> where you yeah. could just set up shop and the other team couldn't really push you out of there. I I like the outposts in theory. I feel like they're not quite as impactful as I would like. Like the vision just feels kind of what's the point, right? Why even give it vision? It's so small and, and yeah. so tucked into an area. It does feel pretty underwhelming, but I, I feel like those... The outposts and shrines have kind of been ubiquitously broken since they were introduced, and they've just been getting more and more balanced. So I'm a little bit okay with having them undertuned, and maybe they need a little buff in the future. That That's a yep. refreshing kind of change of pace for me. Do you remember high ground shrines, dude? I mean, it, it used to when be... When there was five, yeah. <laughs> it used to be, like, bad, bad. So uh, I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm cool. Oh, man. That patch where... People would try and push high ground. Somebody would pop like three of the shrines. Then you just sit there in fountain, basically at the front of your base. Yeah, it was good times. Good times. I did think though that there might have been a spot to maybe leave one or two GPM talents. I wish I had a really good hero example to make this case. But in the same way that I think, as a general rule, RNG mechanics are not good for highly competitive games and are not particularly fun to play against or play with. However, RNG is the hallmark of Ogre, and they found a way to balance Ogre in such a way that he's random, but not too random, but he's still Ogre, and you're still rolling a shitload of dice every time you play him. And I think that's cool that he has an identity that's like that. Um, and I just wonder if there's a hero or two that is still suited for sort of a built-in Philosopher's Stone, though. I guess we have to hold that thought as the fight will break out here. This counter smoke initiation from BP goes in hard onto Oracle. Spartan stunned up. He can't do anything. Two down straight away. No false promise. It's a decent ulti from Bora, but he's going to lose his BKB soon. He does have a double damage on. It's a quick two for nil. Oh, he's TPing now out. Nope. Yeah, Bora is TPing. Skylark gets caught, and Skeeter's going to be left behind. It's going to be a four for nil cleanup. Remember, before that pause, that started as a smoke from aggressive mode. They found the storm, no one survived, and then they turned it to counter-initiate. Another 2k swing. We could be close to the end of this game here. VP just feel unstoppable. Yeah, there just doesn't really seem to be any options for aggressive mode to make plays. And um, when you have the lifestealer with Mjolnir and Halber just being kind of cut through like hot butter, you have some serious issues. I gotta say that Zayas has really impressed me this game. He's been setting his team up so well constantly. Yeah. And the the Nyx Assassin impact has been huge. It's been a great Nyx game. And you're seeing what Nyx can do when he gets some of that early momentum, especially in terms of items, right? And that's where having the Storm and this Ancient Apparition, like, I don't think you want to pick Nyx in a vacuum. You either want to pick him to counter someone or pick him to combo with someone because when he gets this early game momentum, when you can get a pretty early Vendetta, it allows you to snowball that much more quickly. You know, he is really one of these momentum kind of heroes. And damn, he's got Yules and half an Agonims now. This is kind of insane. Yeah, definitely. And... Uh... Man, I just, I look at this aggressive mode lineup and I just continue to ask, like, where is their playmaking? You know, it's... Yeah, I... I mean, Skylark being stuck on 900 gold 
It seemed like they really needed him to get a blink dagger. Maybe this Vlad's was a, was a mistake. I mean, Bora going to be caught here. He has the BKB. Will pop it, but not going to be enough to save him. They've already killed Spartan on the other side. I mean, the way that they're able to just isolate this Oracle. The last, what, three fights? Four fights? We didn't even see a false promise. Spartan just gets caught, dies. They do kill no one there at the end and end his godlike streak. So a little pick-me-up for aggressive mode, but 